So you've mixed up a fresh batch of nutrient solution, dialed in your pH to say 6.0, and have begun feeding it to your plants. However, as your nutrient solution gets recirculated over the next few days, you notice that your pH starts to rise. 6.1, 6.2, maybe even as high as 7 or more. What's happening? Well, in short, your plants are feeding. And that's obviously a good thing. But why does this change the pH? And how often should I add pH down adjuster to bring it back to around 6? Is a little pH drift a good thing or not? Before we answer that, let's first understand understand what's most likely causing the drift. A nutrient solution is made up of various ions dissolved in the water. Positive ions are called cations. Negative ions are called anions. You already know that nitrogen is an essential element for plants. It's the N in your NPK after all. But did you know that nitrogen also plays a major role in your nutrient solution's pH? In hydroponics, we can supply nitrogen in the form of a nitrate, NO3, such as calcium or potassium nitrate, or ammonium, NH4, such as ammonium nitrate. Nitrate is an anion. Remember that it's negatively charged whereas ammonium is acacian or positively charged. Your plants naturally seek electrical balance or neutrality between their roots and their nutrient solution. So when nitrates are uptaken, that's an incoming negative charge for your plant to deal with. What does it do? Well, seeing as you asked, it grabs some positive protons to power the transport of the nitrate into the plant and then converts it to NH3 or ammonia. From there, it can finally extract that key element nitrogen for all sorts of important jobs such as building proteins and nucleic acids. I've basically just said that via some amazing Using plant magic, take that David Copperfield, NO3 nitrate becomes NH3, ammonia, with the help of some protons or H pluses that were inside the plant already as a result of photosynthesis. Once in NH3 form, the plant can use the N part or the nitrogen. This begs the question, what happened to the three O's from the original nitrate and the three H's from the ammonia? Did they vanish? No! They combined and were released back into the nutrient solution as OH minuses, aka hydroxide ions. And what do hydroxide ions do? They raise your pH. The opposite occurs when your plants take up cations. The plant releases hydronium ions or H plus into the nutrient solution, increasing acidity. So when the uptake of the anions exceeds the uptake of your cations, your pH rises. <laughs> Ooh, bear with me, it'll be okay. Incidentally, manufacturers of premium hydroponic nutrients provide nitrogen in multiple forms, both anion and cation, which in turn helps regulate the pH of the nutrient solution. Some hydroponic growers will tell you that a little drift is good as it opens the doors to different elements, man. I've heard of growers letting their pH rise to, say, 6.5 in order to increase the availability of potassium, sulfur, calcium, and magnesium, and then dropping it right down to 5.0 to increase iron, manganese, boron, zinc, and copper availability. Large drifts like this may sound sound very clever upon first hearing, but they can actually be doing more harm than good. Sure, you're increasing the availability of certain ions, but you're also decreasing the availability of others, risking the creation of toxic or deficient conditions for some essential elements. It's far better to stay in the optimal pH range where most ions are generally available, broadly speaking 5.2 to 6.5. Although, if you are growing heavy fruiting annuals, let's say tomatoes, you'll want to be shooting for closer to 6 for more phosphorus availability. Incidentally, many brands of professionally blended hydroponic nutrients such as Floriblend 3-part by General Hydroponics, use special substances called chelates that surround the micronutrient ions and prevent them from falling out of a solution at fairly wide ranges of pH values. This significantly reduces the influence of pH on the bioavailability of chelated cations. So, What's a real solution to pH control? Well, how about an automatic pH controller such as this amazing piece of kit from Blue Lab? Using a pH probe, peristaltic pumps, and tubes inserted into containers of pH adjuster solution, it automatically adjusts the pH of your nutrient solution by adding tiny amounts of pH adjuster liquid when needed. I recommend placing the pH probe at one end of the reservoir and the doser tubes at the other with the submersible pump circulating the nutrient solution 24-7. Note how the dosing tube isn't submerged as this can cause a siphon effect, just let it drip. Now, Blue Lab boasts that you can set it and forget it. And while that's a very appealing notion, you should definitely keep an eye on the data logs if using their Connect model. And, of course, the levels on your adjusters. You can use Blue Lab's own pH adjusters direct from the bottle as they are formulated for use with their doser. Or, alternatively, you can choose a blended pH adjuster product like this one from General Hydroponics. Their pH down is a special mixture of acids that helps to maintain proper nutrient ratios throughout the growth and bloom. A pH pro typically lasts a year if you look after them. That means regular cleaning and calibration kits and always keeping the probe wet. Use KCL storage solution when the probe is not in use and never let those probes dry. Taking a dry pH probe back to a hydro store and demanding your refund is a big no-no. Try soaking it in KCL storage solution overnight. Often, you can rejuvenate it. Sachets of calibration fluid are arguably better than bottles as they're less prone to contamination. 
Obviously, never dip anything directly into the bottle of calibration fluid. That stuff is your benchmark, so keep it as pure as possible. Okay, I'll finish up there. I'll talk about pH as an indicator of root disease another time, and we'll discuss collated elements in pH buffers too if you're keen for me to carry on with a 103. Questions, comments, and encouragement below as always. Please don't forget to subscribe. It's free, and I naturally prioritize subscribers' questions because you've shown me some love already by clicking on that enticing red button. Thanks for watching. This is Everest out. <laughs>